I took away my best friend's iPhone away and instead gave him an Android to use for one month. Now we're back and we're going to find out his experience and how it went. All right, so here he is, my best friend, James Rojas. Hi guys. Yeah, so he has a full-time job uh, working as an accountant, loves Batman and has an iPhone for, uh, at least he's been using an iPhone for 15 years since the iPod Touch. Yep. Yeah, that's a long, long time. And since we partnered with Oppo, they were kind enough to give us the Oppo Find X5 for James to use throughout the month. And he even recorded a few vlogs throughout his day to uh, talk about his day-to-day -day experience and discuss any features he discovered and loved. Roll it. So it's about day one, one and a half of using the Oppo phone. And right off the bat, there's quite a few things I liked. I like how you can kind of choose which way you want to unlock your phone. Something that I found really cool is how easy it is to customize the home screen. So I just kind of held down the home screen and then I could mess with the uh, layout, the icons, add widgets. So I found that to be really cool and really accessible to someone who isn't really used to using phones like this at all. Something else I found cool is some of the backgrounds. I like the live ones that kind of like move when you unlock the phone. Might be a small thing, but pretty cool to me who hasn't really seen stuff like that. Hi guys, so this is my one week update since I've been using the Oppo phone. And so far I'll say the experience has been pretty fun. There's a lot to see on this phone. A few features I've liked so far, um, the always on feature. You don't have to look at your phone dead in the lens of the camera to uh, see the time and notifications. Uh, besides that, Something uh, I've been using all the last few days actually is the split screen feature. I love having the YouTube video open and scrolling through Twitter. Very convenient to have your teams open. Besides that, I've definitely been looking at other features so far. Um, some of them seem a little complicated right now. So I'm kind of like easing myself into a lot of them. So I really like the phone's audio. <laughs> I uh, like blasting music and podcasts in the morning. So it's been part of my daily thing. And you know, it's I've just implemented it. So um, besides that, I've also started using the um, smart sidebar. My favorite thing about that is you can actually move it around the screen. So it's that little, you can condense it into the tab um, all the way to the side of the screen, or you could pull out the little panel and move it around the screen. So a bit of a short one this time, but um, I recently set up the off-screen gestures where you're able to like draw a triangle and turn on the flashlight or um, swipe with three fingers and do a screenshot, stuff like that. Now this is a really cool feature, like it's very like innovative, but I did find myself like turning on the flashlight twice on accident um, already and it's only been like three days that I've been using that feature. So um, I think like for someone who's a little more like I guess with it, not as clumsy as me. Um, like it's a pretty cool feature, but like that's definitely something I don't really see myself using as much. Like I said, I like how fast the phone moves and stuff. So I'm trying to find different ways to like, like test it out more. And um, this might be one that I am not too crazy about, but it's still pretty cool regardless. Hi guys, so we're nearing the end here. And I just want to say I've had a lot of fun checking out things on the phone. Um, a few things I'm not crazy about, but a lot of mind blowing stuff, a lot of crazy things I didn't even know would be, would be on this phone. Um, been trying to like continue to use the features I was talking about, flex drop, uh, split screen, stuff like that. I, I've, I've been um, continuing to just try to see how else I could use them and uh, make my time on my phone more efficient, stuff like that. So now that we're back, uh, so bro, when I first gave you the Oppo phone, what were your initial thoughts? So at first I was pretty nervous. I have never used a phone other than the iPhone, as you guys know. And um, yeah, just transferring all my stuff from one phone to another was a little like, um, kind of like a big thing for me, but hard, yeah. yeah, luckily I had him to kind of like ease me through it all. It was actually the process wasn't actually um, that bad at all. Yeah, yeah. I know the biggest thing about switching between an iPhone and an Android is transferring all your messages. You can't really do that. Um, but in the end, you can still sign into the same apps, you know, that was all the, mm -hmm. the same features and apps. Um, on top of that, transferring your contacts is a little difficult, but once you get into it and switch to an Android, I mean, you're done. You just sign in and everything. So I'm not sure if you knew this, but the phone that you were using, the Oppo phone, has a software, it's called ColorOS. Um, just like iPhones have iOS, it's ColorOS. Did you find any features within ColorOS that you enjoyed using that iPhones or iOS doesn't have? Yeah, so um, I guess like after a couple of days of like using the very like introductory stuff, like um, customization, home screen and stuff, I really started looking into like flex drop, um, applying that to like kind of trying to use it as much as I could through my daily use of the phone. Mm. I really like how like, you know, that little window, like I said in one of my vlogs, um, it's kind of like a window, like on a desktop, you can yeah. just move it around and uh, it's mind blowing how it just kind of like functions 
as a normal app would, but it's a yeah. miniaturized version. That's very cool. Moving it around was really cool. Besides that, um, I actually, I'm still kind of debating in my head whether that or the split screen were my favorite. Split screen, just having like two, basically like two, two open apps. like apps. Um, the same screen. Yeah, yeah and that, that's pretty crazy to me. I didn't even know that was possible on a phone, but um, there you had it. And yeah, yeah, both very cool features, two of my favorites. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I like to use that when for split screen when I have like two videos. Uh, oh no, just not just one video at the top and then messages at the bottom. Yeah, it's or, great for multitasking. Or like yeah, um, using Twitter or and um, streaming like from your freaking uh, Disney Plus or yeah, any one of yeah, those like streaming Netflix apps. Or yeah, like, yeah. I, I could be watching the show and also live tweeting and seeing what's going yeah. on. So definitely something I was doing this last week. Very fun. Dang. Okay. Yeah. I see you. I see you. So I know you like to like you know when you work you like to focus. Have you used like an app called Overlax like within the Apple's interface? I thought that was pretty sick. Yeah, yeah, so um, I guess also another app that I would say initially I wasn't, um, I guess I didn't really consider using it the first like couple days. After that, I started really exploring the phone more, found that app, and I wanted to, uh, I know it's pre-installed, correct? Um, pre-installed, so, yeah. So it really like, it has a lot of like, um, like a variety of things you can do that like de-stresses you or... Um, Kind of just oh, yeah. like, uh, kind of like someone like me who like, you know, I'm always like fidgeting with something. It's really cool to like have something on your phone that you can do that too, but also relax and focus to like, like ambience and like, um, popping the bubbles. Yeah, popping bubbles or like I said, like a, a very uh, controlled city noise. Yeah. It helps me focus or to me at least helps me sleep because I just can't sleep in like plain dead silence. Yeah. And you know, the thing about like most other phones besides Oppo is like, they don't really have like a meditation app like that. That's very yeah. simple. Uh, most meditation apps on Android, you have to pay for them, which is, uh, uh, you know, they, they work well, but Oppo becomes a pre install and I think that was a great idea. Yeah, that's you definitely know? something really considerate of, like, the, like, I guess the buyer of the phone, mm. yeah, to, to include that in there. Yeah, yeah, overall, yeah, I'm very happy. So the next question I have is, that, were there any features on iOS that you missed having uh, when switching to an Android? Um, yeah, so I think this is a very, like, common one, but, yeah, I did notice, like, me missing I, iMessage, just because, you know, a lot, the majority of, like, my friends do use, um, and family, they use, uh, iPhones, so, you know, that's, like, a big thing for me. You know, I, I did see some some jokes about the green bubbles, but once you're like using it, it's not really like a, a big deal. I don't really understand. I never really understood that. Yeah. But, you know, um, yeah, now that more. I'm using it, it's like, you know, it's not much of a difference, but um, my message just has like, to me, uh, like, a, like a comfort level for me that like I, I do miss. Yeah. I did miss, I mean, throughout the month. And um, another one I would say is- um, FaceTime. FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. As I, we were talking yeah. about this earlier, um, like, you know, I work a lot and I'm on the road a lot um, throughout my daily life and being able to FaceTime people like I can't see daily. That's just a big thing for me. That's a personal thing. So maybe like other people, I'm sure there's other ways you can um, contact people like and, and uh, become used to it. But to me, that's just like been a very constant thing I like to do. So, you know, that, that'd be the other thing, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's really in the States right now. The only th reason that we're using, uh, we're not fully on, you know, a universal messaging system is because uh, iPhones uh, right now are using iMessage and uh, it's like an exclusive group, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's only in the States and, uh, you know, it's it's Apple's baby. So you can't really, you know, get it. It's hard to get out of that ecosystem. Yeah. Especially anywhere else in the other country, they use WhatsApp or they use uh, a messaging service like Facebook Messenger. Um, over here, the alternative is RCS messaging, which is, uh, what you used when you switched to an Android, it lets you, it has some of the same capabilities, like, you know, letting you see like the the red receipts and when they're typing and stuff, but it's nothing as prominent as iMessage, letting you do live reactions and, you know, having those cool effects. So that's only the disabilities of living in the States about using the blue bubbles and the green bubbles. That's the, that, the big debate that everyone wants to fix, but we can't, you know? Yeah. 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 Now, James, Androids and more specifically Oppo phones have like this assistive technology uh, to make their interface a lot more accessible for anyone to use, including those with like disabilities. Um, a lot of these features are found within the accessibility menu of the system settings. By any chance, did you find any of the system features to be helpful in your Android experience? Yeah. So, um, actually, I found one on my own um, by. Um 
being like in a like I was in a very crowded room. It was like it was like a sh small show in in our city, uh -huh. and um, I was just trying to communicate with the group I was with. You know, like where do you guys want to go? Um, it's just something simple, but you know, it being so loud in there with the music and the crowd, um, I I remembered like you had mentioned that there was a way to um, it's like your text can show up. Oh yeah, um, live transcribe. Yeah, live transcribe. Yeah, live transcribe. So your your text will show up on the screen and and it's not like small text. It's pretty big too, the font. So it's pretty clear. So I just said, where do you guys want to go sit? And I showed them, and you know, it kind of yeah. like solved such like a like a like a little problem, but you know, it, it did solve it right away. I could definitely see how that can be helpful to someone who's like who has a little trouble hearing, mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, grandparents, parents, stuff like that. So I definitely can see that. Yeah. Um, and another one I wanted to touch on was the uh, magnification tool, oh, yeah. which was like a, it was also pretty easy to find as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, helping my parents out on my, uh, I was using the phone to like help, help them fill out some applications and um, both of them have some trouble um, with like, you know, not that's not too bad, but they do have trouble with vision. So a lot of times on like phones, they need to like really like increase the font size. Yeah, and, like, make really, something a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. using that tool to like help, help them like you know read uh, making sure that like the information i filled out for them was accurate yeah it helped a lot and now you know um that one um the magnification my, tool yeah was yeah to make definitely bigger yeah definitely and it's and it's not a small tool like not like just like a tiny circle it's like a big square yeah so yeah it, it does it did help a lot and they were like wow like that's actually a really nice uh how did you get that on your phone and i was like well you know it's uh it's the Oppo phone. It's yeah, the, it's on Android. I mean, yeah, in general, I mean, it just lets you enlarge things. And I use it all the time when I want to see small things like a profile picture or maybe things in an email that won't enlarge properly. It comes in, it comes in handy for just about anyone. I mean, not even people with like visual yeah, impairments. Definitely. Lastly, the um, color vision enhancement feature. I oh yeah, color vision enhancement. Kind of a long name. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, uh, my brother actually like struggles seeing like certain colors, or uh, mm -hmm. and if they if it's not struggling, it kind of strains his eyes as well. So we've been trying to find like ways to like uh, um, help that, you know, changing the color of the TV we have and stuff like that. So when I found out this phone had uh, a feature that um, basically uh, improves, helps colorblind people. Yeah, yeah, it improves yeah. their lives a lot. So I told them, come over here and like, come look at this. And like, I want you to do it for, for it took just like a couple seconds really um, picking the colors you're more comfortable with. That's pretty And yeah, and it was able to like personalize it for him. And I was like, well, like, okay, like watch, watch a video or use this app for a little bit. Let's see if it, um, um, that experience is better for you than using your, your old phone and um, yeah it was way better for him he, he right away saw like the difference he's like that's actually a really really nice feature so overall uh, what are your final thoughts about the Android operating system when compared to your iPhone so, just some final thoughts okay so yeah there's definitely a lot of positives to this phone if you know anyone who sat through my vlogs or, um, or heard anything I said here um, I just feel like there's way more customization here um, there's way yeah. more like like personalization mm -hmm. as far as like just how the aesthetics of the phone how it functions definitely like uh, feels like this phone's actually yours and you're not just using like like a company's phone so, right yeah um so that that in itself is, is quite like a big difference and uh secondly is the actual like um the functions of the phone like um i really i really like the split screen um thing i really like the the um flex drop feature all, all these things that this phone has um it feels like you have a, a desktop computer in your pocket the, as I, i've already said that before but you know i think it bears repeating that like it you don't think these things are possible on a phone because you know i, I have such like a a, a very narrow um experience with like my iphone and yeah like having this I experience with like the this android has been like you know it opens your eyes a lot so um, sorry, it's a little long-winded, but yeah, it, it, it to me it was quite quite a um, a very like eye-opening experience. Okay, yeah, and I'm glad. I mean, that's how I feel too. Like when I used an iPhone, I felt like it was just very simplified, um, not too much that you can customize. I do like that you can now customize the lock screen on the iPhone, but other than that, I mean, it's mostly set in stone, and you just got to do what you got to do on an iPhone, and just keep doing what you know everyone else is doing. Well, thanks so much James for taking on this huge project of switching to an Android and giving us a taste at what you experienced. Huge thanks to Oppo for making this experiment happen as well and thanks to you guys as well for sticking to the end and watching to the end. Uh, don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. We'll catch you in the next one. Kapow! <laughs>